After a miscarriage, what to do next? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I am a board certified OBGYN and REI, and today I wanna to talk to you about what to do after a miscarriage. With Mother's Day coming up and this past week being bereaved Mother's Day, miscarriage is something that happens to a lot of us and something that we don't talk about enough. If you watched my video where I talked about my own infertility story, I've talked about my prior miscarriages. Miscarriage is scary, isolating, and it's something that I hope you never have to go through. However, if you find yourself in this position, there are some things I want you to know just about what this means long term and where you should go from here. First of all, let's just remember that miscarriage is overall common. One out of four pregnancies will end in a miscarriage. A variety of things can cause a miscarriage. So the top one is what we call aneuploidy. Aneuploidy is an abnormal chromosome number. This increases along with maternal age, so the age of the female partner. And this is because of our eggs. The way I always like to think about it is the eggs have been in your ovary since the moment you were born. They are just selected to ovulate based on your age, so they've been sitting there your entire life. The longer they've been sitting there, the more that proteins degrade and chromosomes are not held in the proper positioning. So when your chromosomes go to split when you ovulate and you get that little 23X that's supposed to be the egg, you have an increased prevalence of abnormalities and we see the miscarriage prevalence increase with age also. And this graph is just a representation that miscarriage rates increase as you get older, specifically as you near 40 and beyond. Some of these stats are pretty overwhelming. If you get pregnant after age 40, you have over a 40% chance of miscarrying. And this is because of that genetic abnormality. This is why the chance of getting pregnant goes down because most pregnancies do not implant or get very far if they're genetically abnormal. So we have a harder time getting pregnant when we're older, but that does not mean that miscarriage is only something that happens to people who are older. It certainly can happen when you're younger. There's other things that can increase the prevalence of miscarriage, and that could be having a clotting disorder. It can also be having certain endocrine diseases like thyroid disease or diabetes. It can also be from autoimmune things, specifically antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, which does cause clotting, but potentially with other autoimmune diseases. Also uterine abnormalities like birth defects, such as a uterine septum. But overall, most miscarriages are deemed idiopathic, meaning we don't know the cause. And this is really hard if you're the patient. This was my situation because we like answers. As human beings, we want answers. So you can undergo this big test and you can find out that Sometimes you don't have that perfect answer. Overall, things that can cause a miscarriage can be random genetic abnormality, that's the top cause, can be what we call a translocation, having an inherited chromosome abnormality, a clotting disorder, autoimmune disease, endocrine disease, or uterine abnormalities. Those are the top causes that we know of. Now, most of the time we're not looking for why you had a miscarriage until you've had two or more. So it is unlikely that a doctor does a full evaluation after one loss. But that doesn't mean that you don't have lots of questions if you have a miscarriage, specifically when should I seek help, what to expect, what should I do. First thing I'm gonna say is that I highly recommend doing what I did not do, and that would be sharing with people in your life. Please consider getting support, whether it's from a professional, like a licensed therapist, a doctor, your partner, your friend, a colleague, a coworker, somebody who can help you through the moment. It's really hard to go through a miscarriage. One of the top things that I hear is, depends on the stage of the miscarriage and what had to happen, is when am I going to expect my period? So we can have early miscarriages that we consider chemical pregnancies. They're still a loss, they still count. But what that means is that you get a positive pregnancy test, but before you ever go in and see a baby on ultrasound, which is usually at six to eight weeks, you just start bleeding. You take a pregnancy test and it's now negative. So you were pregnant, that's a real pregnancy, a chemical pregnancy, it was absolutely a pregnancy. However, it stopped in those early stages. Now, you've gotten your period and that's probably how you know about the chemical pregnancy or you watched your pregnancy test go from positive to negative. So in this point, you will ovulate normally the next cycle. Your hormones will kick right back into gear because things weren't disrupted, that HCG didn't get very high. Now, if you had a very high HCG, it is going to prevent some of the normal hormones from the brain from recruiting an egg for ovulation. 
So what this means is that if you had a very high HCG, you miscarried at a later gestational age, like after you saw a baby on an ultrasound after six to eight weeks, or you had to have a DNC procedure or use mesoprostol, it might take you much longer to get to that point of having a period. As a fertility doctor, I definitely see some of the complications that maybe everybody else doesn't see. So I think it's very important that if you have a miscarriage, that you have a pregnancy test or a blood HCG level that goes down to zero. So a negative pregnancy test or a blood test proving that your hormones have dropped all the way down. The further along you were or the greater the intervention, miscarrying naturally just starting bleeding versus needing medication or a procedure, if you needed more interventions, this becomes extra important because if a piece of placenta is left behind in that uterus, it'll secrete HCG and that can lead to scar tissue inside the uterus. This is also called Asherman syndrome. And I've had patients who this has happened to. They were pregnant, one patient in particular, the baby lost a heartbeat, she needed a DNC procedure. The DNC procedure went fine, there was nothing wrong there. However, they did not get all of the placenta. Her HCG levels would have been high had they still checked. However, she came in to see me with no period for a very long time, and we found a remnant of placenta that then had caused scar inside her uterus. She was able to get pregnant, we fixed her uterus. She has a baby now, so these things can be corrected, but it didn't have to get to that scar tissue point if she had had that positive HCG earlier. So that's just something to know. The more interventions you need, Check a pregnancy test a month afterward. Get an HCG level. Make sure it gets back to zero. You won't start to recruit an egg to ovulate until that HCG is low or zero. So if you had a very high level, it's going to take you longer to get to that next ovulation than if you had a very low level. So it's very common that after a procedure like a DNC, your period could come back anywhere in the four to eight week window. I would say if it's been two months from a procedure, whether it's medical or surgical, and you've not had a period, please seek medical care. I would want to know that about my patients. That's outside the realm of normal. Everything could be totally fine, but that would be concerning to me and at least warrant an ultrasound, some blood tests, and see what's going on. That brings up another really good point. Will I ovulate before my next period? Sometimes people think they have to have that period before they'll ovulate. But actually, if you miscarry, you won't have your next period until your HCG levels have dropped, your brain starts sending out FSH, and then FSH is going to get an egg to grow, that egg will ovulate, make progesterone, and if you're not pregnant, progesterone will drop, and then you'll get a period. So you will ovulate about two weeks before that period, and we don't know when that's happening. If for some reason your doctor wants you to wait a while after getting pregnant, sometimes that's because they want to make sure this pregnancy is resolved. Because if you just have a positive pregnancy test six weeks later, is it a new pregnancy? Is it the same pregnancy? If your hormone levels aren't being followed down to zero, we may not know that information. Another question is, is the first day of bleeding with a miscarriage considered a period? In my mind, yes. Do I expect your next period exactly four weeks from there? Depends, often not, depending on how high that HCG was. Again, your HCG has to get really low before you expect that period. I like to give a quick reminder of how I think about this. If you imagine inside the ovary, you have a little vault where all your eggs are kept. Each egg's in a follicle. A group of follicles comes out. Follicle stimulating hormone from the pituitary gland stimulates a follicle to grow. As that follicle grows, it makes estrogen, it ovulates. That follicle forms a corpus luteum, which is stimulated by luteinizing hormone from the brain to make progesterone. Progesterone is essential for a pregnancy to implant, and if a pregnancy does not implant, progesterone drops and you get that period. If a pregnancy does implant, then that corpus luteum will keep making progesterone in pulses, like pulses from the brain of LH, until the placenta takes over. HCG is another hormone that feeds back to the pituitary gland. This is why we don't ovulate when we're pregnant, because our pituitary is being suppressed. So eggs are still coming out of the vault, none of them are being stimulated to grow, and you just lose them during a pregnancy. So when that HCG is high, the brain is not recruiting another egg to ovulate because it doesn't need to. It's in get pregnant mode, yay, we're pregnant. So depending on how far that pregnancy got or how high your HCG was, you might have a normal HCG, but still not get a period for four weeks or so until the body catches back up to stimulate an ovulation. Is it safe to get pregnant after a miscarriage? It's probably one of the top questions that I get. And the answer overall is yes. Asterisk, talk to your doctor. There are sometimes circumstances where I want a patient to wait 
molar pregnancies are going to be a big miscarriage exclusion here. So if you had a molar or a partial molar pregnancy, you're going to have a different set of rules. Sometimes for an ectopic pregnancy, if you got treated with methotrexate, then you have to wait three months. And sometimes after a surgical procedure, some doctors may tell you to take some time off, although that's rare. For the most part, you can get pregnant in the cycle right after. And I always tell my patients that's fine. There's no reason to have to wait. And are you more fertile after a miscarriage? I hear this question all the time. And the answer is yes. So those of you who know, know that I really love the luteal phase and natural fertility. I did lots of research on this and fellowship. And one study that I really love evaluated very early pregnancy. So this is the early pregnancy loss study. In this study, women gave urine samples throughout the course of trying to get pregnant. And there was highly sensitive HCGs that were tested, more than what you can buy in your you know, over-the-counter pregnancy test. So this study is incidence of early pregnancy loss. It's a goodie but an oldie. It was published in the New England Journal of Medicine back in 1988. In this study, 22% of miscarriages were detected before a patient ever clinically knew. So they had urine positivity and then negativity before they even would have gotten positive on a home test. The total rate of pregnancy loss in the study was 31%, so a little bit higher due to these unrecognized losses. And also interestingly, there was a large number of women who got pregnant. So having a miscarriage did not mean you were going to have more miscarriages. And so yes, you are overall more fertile after a miscarriage and this study confirmed that. And I do have a video on implantation going into detail that can help you. So overall, if you've had a miscarriage, know that you're not alone. Reach out for support. Know what to do next. Discuss with your doctor. Is it safe to get pregnant? Do I need to follow my HCG level or take a pregnancy test? And know that most people who have a miscarriage will go on to have a successful pregnancy and let that little nugget live inside so you can hopefully not lose hope in this process. If you have two or more miscarriages, consider seeing your OBGYN or fertility doctor for a full evaluation to see if you have one of those causes that potentially could be treated or causing your miscarriage. As always, appreciate you guys so much, but appreciate if you'd subscribe to the channel. You can follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD or check out the As a Woman podcast for more. Thanks, y'all.